Hey everyone and welcome to Boston Auto Blog. I am at the New England International Auto Show in Boston, Massachusetts. It is press day, so there's no crowds, no nothing. So let's take a quick look at what they have here uh, for this year and let's have some fun. Then we've got the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera. Let's get to the front end. This car looks absolutely amazing. Unbelievable. Check out that front grille. Now I have to be honest, it has the same front grille as the Vantage, but because of the lights, I think this looks a lot better. We've got the 600 LT. McLaren Boston definitely didn't disappoint. They have a Senna here as well, but there's people around it, so I'm gonna wait for the crowd to die down. McLaren Boston went full send. I mean, they were a late um, addition to the show. And they brought basically everything in their lineup. New Continental GT. Finally, Bentega. I have no idea why the Huracan is, uh, on, it has a cover on it. Got the Urus. Ventador S Roadster. Rolls Royce Cullinan, Rolls Royce Wraith, and this will be uncovered. The Rolls Dawn. Now, for this year, it seems like everything is about hybrid cars. I've seen the Lexus UX250H, the Acura RLX hybrid. There just seems to be a lot of hybrids this year. I think that's the main theme for 2019. All right, we got one car that I've been wanting to review for a very long time, but they're slow to arrive at the Volvo dealerships around here, is the all new S60. I think this looks like an amazing car, so much better than last generation. And like I've talked about in other videos with, uh, coincidentally, the Genesis G70 over there and the Alfa Romeo Giulia, that there are other brands outside of BMW, Audi, and Mercedes-Benz that are definitely worth looking at and might even be worth buying more over a base model 330i, Mercedes-Benz C300, and Audi A4. And then we have the V90, cross country. I still think that station wagons are, they're gonna find their way. I understand that sales have been down a little bit over the last two years, but actually if you look at the last five years, sales are up like 29%. So I do think there's still a market for these, especially where I think it's gonna get to a point where uh, the crossover segment is going to get saturated and the, the consumer is going to try moving to another market that hasn't been um, taken over by a lot of people. And I think if you want a station wagon and really stand out, I think the uh, Volvo V90 might just be one of them. We've got the beautiful Audi R8. This looks so nice. Love the color in red. We have another car that I had looked at at New York, which is the RS5 Sportback. Love the color on this. Usually Audi's not too wild with their colors, but I like this Celtics looking green, to be honest. Actually, when I was in New York, I kind of got a few people mad when I blurted out that it looks like a Celtics green. 
a lot of Knicks fans weren't too happy. Check out the Veloster N. This is the one hatchback I think could give the Volkswagen GTI some major problems. You get 250 horsepower, it looks great, and I just think that Hyundai is another brand that is on a roll right now. When you look at what they're doing with Genesis, and you look at what they're doing with their lineup, I think Hyundai is another brand that we should be taking a lot more seriously because a car like this, if you think about the last generation, to see the Veloster like this now is really incredible and I like the horsepower numbers you can get. This is going to be one of those cars at $26,000. Younger car enthusiasts are going to really enjoy this little hatchback. Alright, so let's take a quick look at the new Honda Passport. Kind of reminds me of a five-seater Pilot. Now, it's on a platform, so I can't get like a, a further out shot, but let's go inside, check the interior just really quickly. Not sure if I'm even supposed to be up here, so I don't get yelled at. But got a digital information display, LCD monitor. And actually, the interior looks really, really nice for a Honda. But this is the new thing. Having more rugged crossovers, and this is the new popular trend in the United, in the United States. Now, I'll be honest, it looks better than the Chevy Blazer because it just looks like a normal Honda. But again, it definitely reminds me of a five-seater um, Pilot. Can't wait to get my hands on one of these for a review. All right, I know that I'm all over the place right now. But what do you guys think of the new Toyota RAV4? It is nothing like the RAV4 of last generation and really probably any generation before it. It looks rugged, it looks masculine. It looks kind of Jeep-like to me, to be honest, with the square wheel arches. But I really like this thing, I really do. I think they've done an amazing job. What Toyota's been doing over the last few years has been amazing, especially when you look at the two-toned Camry XSE V6 and the new Supra. So I think Toyota's onto something here. They're really changing who they are. They're becoming a fun brand and really unpredictable at this point because I remember when this got unveiled, it was like, there's no way this is a Toyota. But yeah, really like this uh, crossover and I really want to spend some time with it. They just arrived at dealerships. <clears throat> so I'm really looking forward to spending some time with it at some point, hopefully within the near future. And of course, I had to stop by the Blazer RS. Now, as you guys remember, I did a review on the LT, and I felt that it wasn't a good representation of what this vehicle is. And when you see it in the RS form, an RS trim, with, with the black and red contrast, I think this thing looks really, really good, especially in person. Now, I understand in photos, and even in video, it doesn't really look that great. But if you guys are coming to the show, definitely check it out. It looks a lot better in RS form. As I said before, even in the video that I had, the, I think it was the review or it was the comparison view between the Equinox and the Blazer, that I just felt that the LT and the lower trim just was not indicative of what this vehicle is. Now let's take a quick look inside to see what is different. So you're gonna get leather seats, which are really comfortable. You've got a panoramic sunroof. And unfortunately it's not on, but you're also gonna get a digital information display, so you get a different setup than you would in most Chevrolets. Also on lower trims, there's not gonna be the black piece for the rear diffuser, but on the RS, there will be, and I like how it looks, especially with the red. I really, really do like this crossover now, looking at it. However, one thing I will say, now these are probably on the 20s or 21s, and I don't have a card with me to check that out, but, um, it still doesn't look any bigger than the Equinox. So I don't know what Chevy's going with right now. I don't know if maybe the Equinox is going to be replaced at some point. I mean, that'd be really stupid for me to say because they're selling 300,000 of them a year, but there just doesn't seem much of a difference to me. And I don't know if maybe Chevrolet felt that if they had a sporty version of the Equinox, it might turn people off. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, definitely check this crossover out. Um, I really want to spend some time with it, do a review on it. Hopefully Muzzy Chevrolet gets one soon so that I can uh, 
do a real proper review of this blazer. Now I understand that it's not the blazer of old, it's not the, um, the crossover that you guys wanted, but especially when it comes to sports crossovers, especially in 2019, I think the blazer is going to be, actually I think it's going to be very popular to be honest. Then we've got the new Camaro. Now a lot of people didn't like the front end and seeing it in person, I don't think it's that bad. And I'm not, I'm not gonna say that it's like beautiful or it's like nicer than the last generation, but I'm not gonna say it's as bad as people thought it was. But I don't know, that's just me. To Camaro enthusiasts, maybe that's a completely different story. Now, I was a bigger fan of the ones that came out in the late 90s and early 2000s, so the newer ones just never really turned me on to begin with. But um, I just don't feel like the front end isn't, is as bad as people say it is. We also have the redesigned Malibu. So up front it looks a little bit better. This is a Premier, so it's a top trim. You're going to get about 250 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. I want to spend a little more time with this. Haven't really done a heck of a lot of research just because they really haven't been arriving at dealerships yet. I, from what I understand, GM is having some, uh, some shipment issues. So uh, they haven't really been able to get the cars at the dealerships lately. So um, really interested in seeing what this uh, new sedan is like. Uh, it doesn't really look much different than the last uh, 2018 model year, but I think I should spend a little more time with it before I get too critical. Also guys, if you live in the Boston area, rejoice. The Alchemy Julia and the Stelvio, you can sit in them. So I spent a lot of time with the Julia in 2018, but let's just take a quick look inside. Love those paddle shifters and the red leather seats. But yeah, so you guys can check this car out. There is no boundary, there's nothing. You can actually sit in them. So that's one thing that is a plus and positive from last year. So you can check them out. That's a TI Sport. And this is a TI Lusso, I think. Yep, it's a TI Lusso. So yeah, you can check them out, sit in them. Get, acquaintance, uh, get acquainted with the Alfa Romeo brand and actually get to sit in them. So, yeah, really cool. All right, so we've got the all-new Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. And this is actually going to be the king of the mid-sized pickup truck segment when it comes to towing capacity. 7,600 pounds. So, yeah, this is pretty cool. A lot of people are waiting for this to arrive. It should arrive in springtime, I believe. So I want to spend a lot of time with this as well. Definitely a pickup truck I want to spend some time with and review. I think this is going to be a very hot seller, especially if you're a Jeep enthusiast, because from what I understand and talking to some Jeep owners that I know, they have waited a very long time to have a pickup truck. And here it is. Now, unfortunately, that is locked, so I can't check it out, but I'd rather wait until one arrives at a dealership to really get a full review. And I've been doing a little bit of that today. You're gonna to see that in upcoming videos. The one minor review, but I really wanna just spend a lot more time with it at a dealership. So this is kind of like getting acclimated with the car before actually going to the dealership. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm a little disappointed that it's locked. I was hoping it was gonna be on the floor for all you guys to check out because I do think that's gonna be a huge vehicle, very popular in 2019. So with the auto show beginning in about two hours, I have to get some final shots before people start arriving. Um, I wanna get the exotics in, get those shots in. Actually, I have to go back and get photos of them. I haven't done that yet. But uh, yeah, so we're just checking out some of the cars. I don't wanna go through everything because I just have a very limited amount of time. But yeah, so it's been a pretty good show, to be honest. Now, some of you guys are watching from the comparison video between the Julia TI Sport and the Genesis G70. Um, some of you guys gave me some criticism for not including the Infiniti uh, Q50S or Q50 and the Lexus IS. And at some point, I'm actually gonna just do a comparison between both of those two cars. Um, you know, I feel like when it comes to Infiniti and Lexus, we know what they offer, we know what they bring. That was the reason why I only talked about the Genesis uh, G70 and the Alphamay Julia TI Sport because they're new cars to the market. 
Infiniti and Lexus have been around for over 20 years, so we know what they bring. Now it just gets to a point where, what are they offering now in 2019, and are they really competitive to the German market? Now it's actually a real struggle for me right now because I could go over a number of cars, but I'm gonna be reviewing them sometime in the spring or summer. So it's really tough for me to like sit here and like, well, should I talk about it? Should I feature it in this, in this little vlog? I don't know what to do. So I'm just walking around aimlessly talking about cars that are interesting me uh, and um, just something that I think is gonna be popular in 2019. So Toyota Supra is not on display today, uh, which really I'm not surprised because the car was just unveiled in Detroit very rarely do they have a car that was just unveiled in Boston. So that, that's, that's, very, um, that's very unlikely and uh, I'm not disappointed to be honest. Now I know some of you guys will be, but I'm just not surprised that that happened, especially where usually cars that are unveiled in Detroit never make it here. We've got an Acura NSX on display as well. Really nice. I prefer Apex Blue to be honest though. Hey, we actually have stairs we can go up. Pretty cool. I've seen this car a number of times, but I want to get some closer shots to you guys. All right, guys, so we have a GTR on display, which I've had the GTR on my channel a number of times, but pretty cool it's actually on display in this, at least for right now, there's no fencing around it. I have no idea what that's gonna be like for tonight and leading into Monday, but pretty cool. All right, guys, so I think I'm gonna call it a day. I'm absolutely exhausted. I uh, just want to do a quick walk around going through what, are the, what cars are here, maybe feature some things I want to film next year, or actually this year, for spring and summer. Unfortunately, we have a blizzard or a snowstorm coming for Sunday. That may throw a lot of things off. Uh, hopefully we don't get a lot of snow. Um, right now it's really iffy, so we'll see what happens over the near future. Hopefully I got some content. Also, what I haven't said or even talked about on YouTube is that um, I do have a podcast. I have one episode up on SoundCloud. I will leave the link in the description below. But I'm gonna try doing a little more uh, podcasts. And I think next week, if I'm gonna be stuck inside, it might be a great time to have another episode. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.